2000 to perpetuate his memory. And we began this when my mother, Rajeshwari, and my sister, Anuradha, were still around with us. And Srinivas Rai Prul, we wanted to celebrate him as one of the significant personalities of early Indian poetry. We instituted the prize in 2009 to recognize excellence in poetry written in English. And this, of course, is jointly administered by the Department of English at the University of Hyderabad. Many of you know about Srinivas Raipul, but there are many young people who also don't know that much about him. It gives me immense pleasure to see the body of work that has emerged on the screen. Some of it is quite new actually. So just to introduce Srinivas Raipul, the son of Raipul Subarao, who was also known as the father of modern Telugu poetry, he was born in 1925 in Sikandrabad. He studied in Nizam College, Hyderabad at the Banaras Hindu University before going also to Stanford University from where he obtained an MS in civil engineering. Yes, he was a very dedicated and successful engineer. While in the United States, he started writing poetry in English, unlike his father who had written in Telugu, and interacted closely with writers like William Carlos Williams, Ewer Winters, and James Lawlin. On his return to India, to a Nehruvian India, post-independent India at that time, he joined the Nehruvian dream, which was the government service as an engineer. He worked with distinction in various departments and rose to top positions in his chosen career. He married Rajeshwari, granddaughter of nationalist Patabi Sita Ramaya, and they lived in Hyderabad. However, like his mentor, William Carlos Williams, who was a doctor by profession, Rai Prol was, as he called himself, an engineer by day and a poet at night. His poems were published in Indian and foreign magazines, including names like The Atlantic Monthly, The Quest, and The Illustrated Weekly. Described by Dom Morris as a pioneer of modern Indian poetry in English, Rai Prol's poems are represented in about 10 anthologies, including Anthology of Indian Poems, edited by Eric Steinus, 60 Indian Poets and Blood Axe Books of Contemporary Indian Poets, both edited by Jeet Tail, and Both Sides of the Sky, edited by the late Eunice D'Souza. Rai Prol founded and edited a lively magazine called East West. Unfortunately, there were only five issues of East West, but some of the best writers in India and those abroad published both poetry and prose there. Three anthologies of his poetry, Bones and Distances, 1968, Married Love and Other Poems, 1972, and Selected Poems, 1995, were all published by P. Lal of the Writers' Workshop in Kolkata, which was really the first home for many of our poets who were launched that way. For the last few years, up until his death in 1998, Raya Prol was engaged in translating Telugu poetry and short fiction into English. What you see there, Perspectives, is that anthology on the Telugu short stories that were translated by him and edited by Alladi Uma and M. Sridhar. And this came out in 2016. His translations have also appeared in Suzy Taru and K. Lalita edited Women Writing in India. There has been a modest but significant scholarly interest in his work and his well-known correspondence with the great American poet, William Clacados Williams. Bruce King discussed his contributions in a book, Modern Indian Poetry in English. And last year, we saw the publication 
of why should I write a poem now? And if you look closely at this, you can see daddy's handwriting, his very own handwriting on the book cover. I thought that was something that fascinating that the publishers did. And this was edited by Graziano Kratli of Yale University. We owe a lot of gratitude to, uh, you know, we're really, really grateful to Graziano because he put Triprol back on the map in the last year. Um, so he painstakingly unearthed correspondence from various libraries across the US. Um, the letters have a foreword by Arvind Krishna Mehrotra and were published by the University of New Mexico Press. To quote from this introduction, Rayaprul's correspondence with Williams, Lawlin, and Poetry Magazine adds an important chapter to the story of Indo-American literary relations and more than a few precious paragraphs to the history of Indian literature since the independence. This year, we are extremely happy to see the publication of Angular Desire, Selected Poetry and Prose of Srinivas Rayaprul, edited again by Graziano Kratli and Vidyan Ravindran and published by Carconet in their Carconet Classics series. This volume, as, as well as the letters book, have started attracting good reviews in international literary journals. Um, in an otherwise gloomy pandemic year, I think it was really uh, heartwarming to see The Guardian feature Srinivas Raipro's Godhu lead time as their poem of the week. We do have many, many more uh, you know, reviews and other things that have been coming up and everything has been so positive. As I've been telling everyone this year, I wish all this came 25 years ago. I wish Razziano appeared on the scene 25 years ago, but it was not to be. But we are here to enjoy it. And we have also begun, uh, you know, celebrating the prize. The Srinivas Rai Prul Poetry Prize started in 2009. And this prize has been awarded to a poet in the age group of 20 to 40 years. Now, we've received a lot of criticism and flack about this. But then my answer to that is again an emotional one. My father's best work came out between his 20 to 40. We picked this photograph, knocking on 40 there with the gray hairs emerging, the way I remember him, and writing his best at that time. So we decided to keep that age. So this is jointly administered by the Department of English at the University of Hyderabad. The Department of English has been extremely wonderful in its support to the prize. We, my mother also donated my father's literary collection, all his books to the department library. So we are very grateful to several members of the Department of English uh, and, and that collaboration is going on for 12 years and the prize has become something of a literary event now. Many young and aspirants in aspirants are also looking forward to this. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the process and the winners. So we've had a lot of response from young poets. The first year was the maximum. We had some 350, um, you know, um, entries at that point. And the po every year we have two members from the Department of English. And that year it was Mohan Ramanan, who you see in that picture over there from the faculty and Sachidananda the Mohanty and the poet jury was Sudeep Sen. But to give away the prize, we had the grand old man, Shiv K. Kumar, probably the first head of the Department of English as well, to Aditi Machado, who herself is, has made quite a big name today in the international poetry scene. And 2010, we had Hemant Mahapatra, and we had Hemant, who again, an engineer by day and a poet by night, like Rai Prol. The poet jury was Jeet Thail. Jeet was very, very supportive from the beginning. 
In fact, before we started the prize, he came and did an event in the department and kind of laid the excitement for it. I think that was very, very uh, uh, interesting. And we also had the, um, for the second time again, we had two members from the Department of English. Every time we have two faculty from the department as well. The third winner, 2011, was another Aditi. And people started asking us if we only give the prize to Aditi's. So that <laughs> was Aditi Rao this time. And the poet jury was K. Srilata from IIT Madras, an alumnus of the Department of English of UOH. And to give away the prize at the Hyderabad Literary Festival was Mina Alexander, and we were really lucky. I, I, I never thought that, you know, Mina will leave us so soon, but Mina has been another big supporter of our prize. Um, the fourth year was Tushar Jain, and this time the poet jury was Arundhati Subramaniam. I think Pramod Nair and Sridhar were the faculty jury from the department that year. And we used to have this at Saptaparani. You can see the shadow of the tree where you saw in the previous winners, you know, a very nice little place in Panjara Hills. Then Hyderabad Little Literary Festival also began to collaborate with us. Then we move on to 2013, and we had Mihir Butts, who always wanted me to say that he was the youngest who received the prize. Mihir was barely 23 at that time. I think Aditi was also around that, actually, Aditi Machado. But Manohar Shetty from Goa was the poet jury, and we had him come and give away the prize. I have to say that the person giving away the prize was not always the jury. So Keki came to give away the prize to Hemant Mohopatra, and we are very grateful to see Keki Daruwala here, but he was jury another year. Um, and then 2014, Ranjit Hoskote was the jury and Ranjani Murli received the prize. Ranjani Murli was so excited. She flew all the way from the United States with a little baby in her arms to come and receive the prize. So Satya, you know that this is a very different online presentation that we had. And that was probably one of the last times we managed to have it on October 25th, the birth anniversary. Otherwise we've been changing the dates for various kinds of reasons. Uh, and then 2015, the seventh prize was Aishwarya Ayer. Aishwarya Ayer may also be here today. And she received the prize from Professor Mohan Ramanan, who served on the jury several times from the department. And the poet jury was Vivek Narayanan from the United States as well. And again, as you can see, all the poets have been extremely supportive. Um, we have 2016 again at the HLF, Keki Daruwala, and Keki is very much here with us today and came early and met everyone. I really want to express our appreciation, sir, from the Literary Trust for your, you know, support. And Arundhati, Arundhati came to the HLF and she was kind enough to give Gorik the prize. Gorik was absolutely thrilled. He also received a second award on the same stage, the Muse India Award. So that was, again, some kind of making of a history. Sachin Anand Mahanti has been a major support. He was the head of the English when this all started. But this time, he came to give away the prize to Debarshi Mitra in 2017. That was number nine. And the poet jury was Arvind Krishna Mehrotra. The previous year, Arvind was unwell and he said, I'm going in for heart surgery. So I said, okay, sir, I'll come back to you next year. And he said, you don't give up, do you? But of course we didn't. And then, you know, what we started from that, from the previous year was that we would send about 20 entries that were shortlisted by two faculty from the Department of English to the poet jury. Until then, all the three of them would read all the poems and come to a consensus. But since 2016, started doing this so the process became a little more simple every year we've been getting a wonderful response and then suddenly we just you know uh, emerged on number 10 purna swami 
amazing it was and we also had um, uh, an academic poet ev ramakrishnan on the jury that year and professor ramakrishnan came to give away the prize to purna so um, i paused and spent a little more time on this because last year as i said in my introduction was really a historic event both the books appeared graziano appeared he came all the way to india and he is such a wonderful researcher you know the teacher in me feels i wish our students are like graziano the way he you know found everything every little detail you should see the archive of emails between graziano and me the questions he asked you know and we we we, we tried my sister and i tried to find answers to most of his questions but there he was unrelentless and and you know he keeps sending things this little publication here their comment everything comes back so prashant parvathaneni yes prashant you must be here too uh, 2019 winner and prashant our first telugu to win the rai prol prize but from bihar um prashant but actually bangalore all these bangalore poets you know they keep taking away the prize and anna has been there last year too as head of the department of english so we had a big event hyderabad literary festival was kind enough to give us the stage for an entire session on srinivas rai prol the jury of course was jeev patel from bombay and uh, jeev said he can't um, come and graziano came and did the honors but like i said every single one with the regard they have for srinivas rai prol every single one of the indian english poets has been extremely supportive so i am very very grateful to all sridhalla for actually you know in the old days when we didn't have our twitter we didn't have our facebook account we didn't have a you know it was sridhalla's blog that would get all the poets in so thank you to her as well so satya if you're wondering when i'm going to get to talking about you this year the winner is satya das so satya is someone who was chosen by a poet jury mamang dai and mamang dai is definitely somebody who everyone knows but her you know extremely in easy manner in the way she has been able to say yes immediately in these pandemic times it has actually been wonderful in one sense i think uh, it was possible for all this to happen because of this online stuff but satya dash wins the 12th srinivas rai prol poetry prize so i'm going to say a little bit about satya before i give it over to anna satya is a 29 year old poet an independent artist based as i said in bangalore and he grew up in katak he was selected this year from a field of 180 contestants all over the country by a jury consisting of two members of the faculty of english department professor pramod nair pramod thank you you're here and i guess saradindu bhattacharya a young faculty member from the department these were the two faculty members from the department thank you both and our sahitya academy winner and padmashri mamang dai so mamang dai got 28 entries and satya uh, made it as the winner i would also like to mention the shortlist of prize a pandit suchtuti pachisia and parveen sakhe parveen is also here satya's poems have appeared in waxwing wildness redivider passages north the journal the florida review prelude the cortland review hobart poetry at sangam among others and satya is also with a degree in electronics from bits pilani so somewhat like srinivas rai prol in that sense at least i'll say that here but he's been a cricket commentator so that's been a very interesting piece of news too 
He has been nominated for other prizes, Best New Poets, Best of the Net, and the Orison Anthology. So I am extremely happy again to see so many of you here. And I will now hand over to Professor Anna Kurian, who is the head Department of English, University of Hyderabad. Over to you, Anna. Thank you, Aparna. Thank you, everyone who's here today. And it's a pleasure, as always, to be involved in the giving of the Rifle Prize. I've been, I think, associated with it both in the jury member, I mean, uh, from the department activity, as well as standing in for the head and now as the head of the department. Thank you, everyone. Welcome to this evening. And yes, what Aparna was saying is true. It makes it easier for several people to attend because we are online now. And it really makes it great fun to catch up with everyone in the chat online as well. A brief introduction to the Department of English for those of you who may not know very much about it. And then I'll move on to introducing our poet jury member, Ms. Mamangai. The Department of English was one of the first departments of the university. In fact, if I'm right, it was the first department of the University of Hyderabad. And interestingly enough, our connection with poetry goes back to that very beginning because the department began functioning from the golden threshold, which was the former residence of Sarojini Naidu herself, one of India's foremost poets. On, and it is her house that the Department of English was first housed in. So as you can see, poetry and us, we go back a long, <laughs> long way. From that beginning, where we were headed by Professor Shivke Kumar, again, a distinguished poet, we have come through the years, progressed through the years, and during those years, we have been associated with several distinguished faculty as well as creative writers. Sometimes faculty are both faculty as well as creative writers. And we have grown in various ways in terms of numbers. So from early classes, which, were, which consisted of maybe 15 kids to now, I think we are admitting 62 students into one class. Faculty numbers from the early two to three to now 18, at least on the row, I mean, on paper, and of course, in terms of publications. But all through, we have not given up our interest in poetry, our writing, and our output, both in terms of creative work as well as public academic publications, has always been more or less consistent. Now, Amongst our poets and amongst our creative writers in the department, we've had poets such as Mina Alexander, whom Aparna spoke about. We've also had Hoshan Merchant, Shukke Kumar, of course, amongst the earliest. K. Srilata, who has served as jury member over here for the Rifle Prize. We've also had Makran Paranjpe, and there are several others as well who have been teachers of this department and who have been poets and writers. Amongst the non-poet, but still creative writers, people who write for children as well as adults, we've had Sri Vidya Natarajan, we've had Nandini Nair, Shalini Srinivasan, Alok Bhalla, all of whom who've written for children as well. So you see, creative writing, just like academics and teaching, seems to be part of the deal. And it's been a great experience being associated with the Rap World Prize. And for that, we have to give special thanks to Professor Sachidananda Mahanti, who instituted this in the department and who made it come to pass. Because when Professor Aparna was looking for collaboration, he's the one who convinced the rest of us that this was a good thing. And it has been a good thing from 2009 when we started out to today when we are giving the 12th Rap World Prize. We've benefited enormously from the activities associated with the Rifle Prize. Now this year, because of the pandemic, we are not having the usual activity in the department, which involves the prize winner who comes to read his poetry in the department. The poet jury member or the poet who's giving away the award also usually reads 
his or her poetry in the department. And sometimes they give us give our students a short talk or two as well. As a result, we have been privileged to listen to several eminent poets, amongst them Jeet Tail, Manohar Shetty, Arundhati Subramaniam, who did this amazing poetry reading, and several others. And like I said, it's a great experience, because also because the Raipral family does this whole, does everything associated with the event in this very seamless fashion so that nobody knows, nobody is left out in the cold or nobody is left unknowing in the dark. We are all clued in as to what has to take place when. Moving on from there, so the two members of the faculty of the department who served on the jury this time were Pramod Nair and Sharadindu Bhattacharya, our senior most and our junior most faculty members. And they shortlisted, as Aparna said, they shortlisted 28 poets and send them to Miss Mamangai. And that brings me to the second part of my evening's duties, which includes introducing Ms. Mamangai, who was the jury, poet jury member for this year. Ms. Mamangai is a poet and novelist from Arunachal Pradesh. Before she became a full-time creative writer, she was a journalist and she was president of the Arunachal Pradesh Union of Working Journalists. She wrote, worked extensively on the culture, the politics and the customs of the state. And her first publication was on the state itself titled Arunachal Pradesh, The Hidden Land. And this was in 2003. It was to do with the folklore and traditions of Arunachal Pradesh and its different communities. And interestingly, it received the state's Very Elwin Award. She has also worked with the World Wildlife, World, Wide Fund, World Wildlife Fund for Nature in the Eastern Himalaya Biodiversity Hotspots Program. She was member of the Arunachal Pradesh Public Service Commission as well. It's interesting also that Ms. Mamangdai's career has taken this trajectory because the poets of the Northeast, insofar as we know them, have always been also associated with the idea that they're nature poets. So her work for biodiversity and such chimes in with that as well. In 2011, Ms. Dai was awarded the Padma Shri for Literature and Education and the Sahitya Academy Award in 2017 for her see book. You now. Will they see me? No, no. For her book, The Black Hill in English. Ms. Dai was also has Thank also you. been conferred a DLIT by the National Institute of Technology, Arunachal Pradesh. And she lives in Itanagar, Arunachal Pradesh in India. She has several books to her credit, poetry as well as fiction. And the earliest that I remember of her poetry is a volume called River Poems, published by the Writers' Workshop in that as well. Aparna struck the right note when she said that Pilal was responsible for so many of the English poet, Indian English poets receiving their first book, their first publication, and hers as well comes from Writers' Workshop. She has also written on the food of Arunachal Pradesh. She has worked on the folklore of Arunachal Pradesh for young readers in a volume called The Sky Queen and Once Upon a Time, Once Upon a Moon Time. And so I give to you this evening, Ms. Mamangai, as the poet you remember, as well as the one who will announce the prize and virtually give it to our prize winner. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor Anna Kurian, for the kind introduction. And let me begin by saying it really is a such a pleasure to be here with you, you know, in this, uh, in, in with the University of Hyderabad, even though it is from this great distance that we're able to meet. I would have loved to have come there and kind of interacted with everyone, but pandemic times and uh, anyway, at least we could make it like this. I'm not very proficient with uh, digital media platforms, but somehow I think we're seeing each other and it really is so nice to be with you all this evening. Thank you very much, Aparna, for having asked me to be 
uh, the poet jury for this year's Raya Prol uh, Poetry Award, uh, Prize. Of course, I would have said yes anyway, because I feel during the, uh, this pandemic time, uh, there has been a lot of activity and I've been hanging on to my writing, you know, as a, uh, as a way of crawling through this tunnel, this uh, very strange period, which is perhaps stranger than I think uh, we think we understand. It hasn't played out yet. But nevertheless, I find poetry has taken, you know, kind of center stage for me and we have been interacting with a lot of poets. When I received uh, the shortlist, it was very exciting. Actually, the correspondence started sometime, I think it was in August, Aparna. And uh, then there was a period of, you know, uh, little communication. And then I heard the shortlist was being prepared. So thank you also to Professor Pramod Nair and Dr. Bhattacharya because the 28 I got, all the lines were quite memorable. You know, I, I had only the numbers, you know, number 11 or number 39, number 99. And I was reading everything very carefully being here in the house. So this was the shortlist sent to me out of 180 entries, I think 28 um, came to me and then, uh, I was reading, I read it many times over. I was even reading the poems aloud. And uh, and then of course the selection came down to uh, Satya Dash. So this is also a, a very big congratulations to Satya because your poetry was very moving and it was, it was, uh, it struck me as being kind of different. I was thinking about people like Jack Kerouac, say, if I may use that, and if you don't mind my using that uh, comparison, but it's like poetry on the road for moving around without too much uh, sentimentality, but with a real large heartedness, you know, that was uh, coming across and, uh, I think you really deserve the prize this year from my point of view. So Satya, congratulations again. Aparna, I shall read the citation and then talk a little bit more about uh, the poems that I had read. So the Srinivas Rai Prol Literary Trust in association with the Department of English, University of Hyderabad, is pleased to present the 12th Srinivas Rai Prol Poetry Prize on October 25th, 2020 to Satya Dash for a poetic voice that traverses territories of solitude and reflects the honesty of feeling and a contemplative large heartedness. The Srinivas Rai Prol Poetry Prize was instituted by the Srinivas Rai Prol Literary Trust, Hyderabad, to recognize excellence in poetry written in English and is administered jointly by the Department of English University of Hyderabad. The trust was started in the year 2000 to perpetuate the memory of the poet Srinivas Rai 1925 to 1998, who is considered to be one of the significant personalities of the early Indian English poetry in India. Satya Dash, many, many congratulations. I know you'll be uh, coming on later, but just before that, I must mention also the, the others 
also who had been shortlisted. There is uh, Kulzaifa Pandit of Srinagar, Stuti Pakichia of Kolkata, and Parveen Saket from Pune. I think Parveen is here. We just said hello to everyone. And I saw some posts had just come up saying, all these Bangalore boys and uh, I think... Uh, and girls. <laughs> And they someone had said, not only boys, you know, I could see oh, that. No, I could <laughs> boys only, I said angles. <laughs> I could see that reply. So it's wonderful. And I'm, I'm really thrilled also that uh, Keki is here because uh, Keki and I, we have been in touch and we've met so many times. And I think it's wonderful that... Keki Darwala is also attending. And Sri Dala, a long time ago, I think we had met maybe in Goa and I knew you were very proficient with, you know, uh, communications, technology, blog. And I was saying, what is blog? And you were trying to explain to me, you know, the meaning of uh, what blog was. And now see, we've come, we've come so far and we're doing all this. It's really wonderful that people are working together and honoring the memory of really a very significant personality. And my tribute also to the memory of Srinivas Rayapral. And I think Aparna is doing such a wonderful job. So thank you really for having me on this. It's really wonderful to be here. I don't know. I'm supposed to read Thank something. Is it? Thank you so much for this. And now maybe you can read your work. Um, you know, lockdown has been uh, such a strange period, as I was saying. Somehow sitting here in Arunachal Pradesh, you know, I've, I've just been thinking about uh, bats and palm civets and pangolins and the other day I was talking to a friend in his village just to talk about this coronavirus bat connection. And, you know, we're not so far from Yunnan province, like where you have the horseshoe bat and all that. And if they opened the Stillwell Road, we could drive straight to Kunming from parts of Northeast India. So he said, oh, no, 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 you know, bats are food for the people here. And we have clans who actually own bat caves and something like this has never happened. It, maybe it is because somewhere we cross the line. So I was thinking about this crossing the line, you know, maybe a debt has to be paid. But anyway, we've been writing, as I said, hanging on to writing. So there is a lot of uh, lockdown poems but other things have been happening as well. So I'll read a poem which is written during this period, but it's also for my father, because we are honoring the 95th anniversary of your father, Aparna. So it's, uh, it's called Palindrome. This was February this year. My father spared us the hospital visits. He didn't say much as if it would confuse us if he said he was not hungry or that he was too tired to walk to the gate. Sometimes I heard him singing in his room. I'm comfortable here, he said, all wrapped up, heater on. When you grow old, everything catches up as if on cue, hair, sight, sound, limbs. Even the night lamp flickers, retreating into a shrinking space, living like a guest in your own house. If you had stayed a little longer, sunlight was spreading across the garden. We could have thrown off our caps and jackets and basked in the sun like iguanas or simply stayed still like resident geckos entranced in the moment looking at the green mountain. When old people die everyone says it was a matter of time. 
It is the way good men should go, peacefully, in their own home, asleep in their beds. What do you say, February moon? What do you say? Never in a thousand years will we see another palindromic day. Never will we feel the shipwreck of survivors in a strange space, the bed, the chair, the door to the bathroom, tap dripping. Never, now we'll never know what old men wait for, waiting quietly and for so long, since we were small and they were young perhaps waiting for this moment, praying to find us ready when we turn and the green mountain is gone. Thank you, Aparna. I'll pass it on to uh, for the next part of the program. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank for sharing that. You're welcome to read another if you like. No, that's fine. I'd love to hear. Uh, Satya can read or, you know, whatever is next on the program. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. It is now my pleasure to welcome the man of the evening, Satya Das. I'd also like to give you... Yes. Yeah. If you like, everyone can unmute and... Applaud Satya. Okay, Satya. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. It's uh, I'm a bit moved, to be honest, and it's uh, a bit overwhelming. Uh, but um, I must take the opportunity to um, thank. Yeah, if I can ask you to show the citation for a picture moment once before you start. Sorry to interrupt you. No, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sending that. I know it was really delicate and came back in a uh, strapped big parcel. So <laughs> for uh, all the attention uh, to to send me that. Really appreciate it. So as I was saying, it's quite moving and a bit overwhelming too. Um, and uh, if I uh, might uh, begin uh, probably to talk a little bit about um, how I uh, got into poetry, which was um, a bit of a happy accident, really. Um, I remember being uh, actually uh, the one to deride poetry, and it embarrasses me now, but I guess... Uh, that's that's the way uh, the story started. It embarrasses me now that I was one to actually derive poetry, saying, uh, "Why do people have to, you know, talk indirectly about so many things?" I was a prose writer, and I was writing short stories for um, you know a few months, and I always enjoyed the prose form since uh, my childhood. Uh, so, I think it was uh, almost 2018 that I first started to write poems, but. Prior to that, um, the happy accident that I was talking about, I went through a low period for a uh, period of like six, seven months. I remember distinctly being in a cab and uh, scrolling through Instagram and someone had shared a page from um, contemporary American poet Kavya was calling a wolf a wolf. And I just could not get those lines out of my mind. And the funny part was that I couldn't understand any of those lines. So the powerful sort of inflection at this point of time was that, uh, like consider two cases where there's one instance in which uh, you see something beautiful, you understand it and uh, you appreciate it. The other part being where you don't understand any of it, but you know that it's beautiful. And the second, the latter instance uh, can, can be sometimes uh, really inspiring. And I could not get those lines out of my head. Uh, so I got, uh, really attracted to poetry at that point of time. So I brought uh, the book, which uh, Dr. Aparna actually um, talked about earlier uh, in, uh, in the introduction to Srinivas Rampur also, 16 Indian Poets, edited by Jit Thail. And it's actually a matter of great delight and serendipity that Mamang Dai's uh, poems and Srinivas Rampur's poems are actually adjacent sections in this particular book. So it be, uh, a lot of happiness. Um, another um, happy accident today. So this was the first book I bought. And then I just started 
basically immersing myself uh, in this wide ocean. Uh, and there was another happy moment I remember, and this is probably a uh, really moment of pop, pop cultures, uh, you know, uh, it, it made a difference in my life because I was watching Mad Men and uh, season one, I think episode 10 is when the protagonist uh, at a Manhattan bar uh, sees another man all by himself drinking um, a glass and he has a copy of poems and it's, you can only see the cover on the screen and the cover says meditations in an emergency Frank O'Hara. So given the fact that I was already just dipping my toes in the ocean of poetry, I just saw this particular book and I see the protagonist himself in that particular uh, series getting involved and reading that. So it obviously uh, kind of triggered a domino effect and I uh, you know, bought that book and started uh, taking in those words and just the visual experience of the same thing. You're not understanding a lot but the way the words wash show you is something that you remember, you obsess over it. And that's probably, uh, as a part of the Indian education system, I remember studying the poems in my IC syllabus, right? You kind of develop an animosity towards it. I, it's unfortunate that I have to say that. But um, the fact uh, that it lies that um, there's too much stress on understanding, uh, you know, understanding and interpretation, and then you have to uh, obviously memorize. But that's, we'll save that for another discussion. Uh, the point being um, that after I started writing, I really saw that uh, poetry wasn't about life, but poetry was life. The experience of essentially reading a poem was so much akin to a, uh, something that T.S. Eliot says of, um, the stratus of the stratum of feeling uh, when you actually strip off the topsoil of a life that itself um, is poetry. So um, that was sort of my introduction to poetry. Now I can probably read some of the poems. Um, and um, I can begin with one that was actually sent for this particular uh, award. So uh, to say a little bit of a poem, uh, essentially all of our lives, if you see, and if you keep a mirror, right? Uh, and especially if you see a, sort of a screen on a movie where you have a mirror and you have one person on one side, you have another person on the other side and the mirror dividing the screen or the page in this particular uh, case, the mirror being a chiasmus where it divides um, to um, two instances with a lot of similarities. And I think our lives, despite being so unique, are also very similar in the texture and quality of emotions that we experience. So this was an attempt to uh, sort of capture that uh, particular um, chiasmus that I was talking about. So it's called neural network. Neural network. When he's a kid, his father tells him, the scientists decided not to tell us the moon is actually the sun in disguise. It knows the laws of light and distance better than anyone else in the universe. The kid does not know his father is drunk. The stink of breath doesn't disgust him. He treats us as another strange thing about adults. Now this, ca now this fact could have been from a science magazine's April Fool's newsletter. It probably was his father's mind. When he grows up, he almost forgets how his father loved newspapers to the point he would not have his morning tea until the Times of India arrived like a thick wad of grotesque rags the world had been scrubbed by in the last 24 hours. Now the boy remembers only the newspaper's logo. Two elephants facing each other with a shield separating their advancing tusks below a ribbon proclaiming, let truth prevail. Now it chokes him up to recount a specificity like that, though he has forgotten the deep baritones of his father's voice. This boy is not my friend. He is not even an acquaintance. I only meet him once at a poetry workshop and I become the intimate stranger that kind of lacerating detail needs to live on. It replenishes my grid for the gifts of humanity, one unknown tongue can gift another at one unexpected place. And the consequence, thought splinters, rearranges memory. Consider this quiz book my father brought me. Still somewhere in my chest of drawers. What purpose do these relics serve on the bottom shelves in which of God's countless cobwebbed museums do they finally end up at? 
Here, look, I've spent most of my thrumming 20s in Bangalore, orbiting the city's many lakes, sneezing while staring at dark desktops with rapt attention, falling in and out of love with what is supposed to be the subcontinent's best weather. And when somebody asks me, what is my favorite memory of the city? My first thought is about the golden straw colored apple cider from the brewery near my apartment that I carried home once. The bottle inside my suitcase wrapped in a Turkish towel, rattling along in a sleeper train, and then convinced my teetotaler father to taste. He did not admit, but I could see he enjoyed its light bodied floral notes. So uh, that was Neural Network um, and, and the attempt to capture um, the chiasmus I was talking about. Um, moving on uh, to the next poem. Um, I think yesterday only I was reading an interview by a contemporary interview of contemporary American poet Francine uh, J. Harris. And she talks about uh, really eloquently to explain um, the difference between prose and poetry, how to convey the specificity of an emotion. If I tell you that is prose, she says, but if I devise a system of language that could make you approach to the exactness of that feeling um, that one felt, I'm approaching towards poetry. So that kind of resonated uh, yesterday in my mind. And when I look back at this particular poem, when I, which I'm going to read right now, uh, I think that that's the feeling that I probably had subconsciously. There was not, the poem was not about anything, but it became about something at the end. Um, and I hope um, I'm able to convey that something um, to this poem. So the next poem is called, uh, and it came out in a wax wing a while ago. So this next poem is called, While Praying, I Suddenly Think of a Swear Word. While praying, I suddenly think of a swear word. A checklist of roses becomes a quilt for a night of battered love. No brick bats, not the thin membrane of bats, their ultrasonic thrums, despite a scrumptious yolk, yellows in me a dapper mammal. Mammal I was, mammoth I am, resting on a hammock, rocking me like the divine mouth of a valved alligator. The openings of 2D beasts salvage me as if I'm a hustler of recovered pleasures. Which animal's throat doesn't like water? I like wafers dipped in somebody else's water. Call me delusion, call me a fisherman's rope. I was never the slimmest among the slivers of rope. I cut corners on the road. My body once was searched for folds to grope. My wings teached by mother, nurtured and oiled, now vanished. No, I did not cry. Because to fly, I did not deserve. But those feathers my mother did. Think about the souls wrong, whose mouths must chew their own wings to hide the quick trail of past blood. Do the rest beneath our stucco feet, carrying the weight of a beleaguered fate, the fate that befell condoms and conquests before you invited the mist that sank low to wash your sordid nests. Show me those bins with black bags of smiling bone, shallow shots, of a femur's consecration. Can you make my name biodegradable? Say yours without vowels. Ask God to peep from a ventilator while you disembowel. At the end of my prayer, below's on a bronze bitten tongue, the moss green smoke of an inward hum. So this was while praying, I uh, suddenly think of a swear word. I think I... This Pope prayer, this title actually came from a distinct childhood feeling that I remember while praying. I had religious sort of uh, bringing up um, and there was always the fear, am I going to think something uh, that would violate this prayer? So this fear I wanted to really capture, um, childhood fear um, in this particular title. Um, the next poem, and probably one of the last ones uh, before we move on to the end part, is one that was written in a flight. Uh, in 2018, I was, um, when I was just beginning to write poems, right? Uh, it was a mad obsession, and I found flights to be uh, the perfect sort of, uh, you know, when you're rising, when you're high up in the atmosphere amongst the clouds, there was something that really got me charged up and uh, really got the pen writing as well. So this one is called Flight Poem, Bhubaneshwar to Bangalore. I'm plumeless Indian bird seated on a plane 
from one capital to another, up in the air, beginnings and endings matter a little less. I attempt a poem because I want to really fly. It's the aisle seat. It's la lateral leg space, my mental buoyancy. The air hostess eyeballs me, writing during takeoff. Her eyebrows prance like two approaching caterpillars. They're climaxing romance, twist out in the center. They catch my gaze. I think they wink at me. Is that how you take off? I am so attracted to cameos tonight. Wanting to play lead takes its toll. You see, stripping the world of attention require one, requires one to be naked himself. The man who held the sky but who could not hold himself when he was done. How do you ace this thing called balance? A lot of pursuits feel like knifing onions. My eyes consistently turn into hot springs. Now I turn my attention to the oblong of blue. The window seat sky flawless blue. Like Lord Krishna's skin, my blemishes prickly, my pimples love lawn. Listen, I've seen tourists find love. In the quarries, I mine for a little warmth. Shards of metal littered my feet. Insignia disappear into blood. Here comes sobs from the back. Here is one more baby in a brave new world. Turns out it's a grown man in misery. Turns out sobs don't age. Galactic lights twinkle. The plane meditates in the growling air. A museum of human stories, faces become artifacts. My ears rattle from the altitude drop. I spit out a couple of words, spill from my mind's throat. They land on my adjacent passenger's brow, very much like this plane on the strip, important and incoherent. Hi there, do you see me? Do you see me through this haze? I have now arrived. That was flight poem. Um, I'll move on to the last one. Uh, which was very recent and um, the idea behind writing this poem was just to have fun. I think very often we forget that writing also is a matter of great fun and doesn't have to be a very serious academic activity all the time. You know, looking at line breaks, looking at scansion. Uh, I mean, those things obviously are very important. Um, but uh, once in a while, one should also enjoy writing like, you know, a conversation or a chat or even a party. So that's the idea in which this poem was written. It's called uh, Acceptance Sonnet. Blowing a raspberry wasn't the ideal finish to the well-crafted speech I was given feedback. I did not argue with the critics. I loved confounding way more than captivating. I drank green tree daily for improved antioxidation. The most days I suffered from a constipation of intellect and its over-reliance on eloquence. It was a dream to play the detective in a thriller. It was a dream to be truly insightful. The fondness for capsicum and my mother's bitter gourd recipe outlasted my aspirations to be a well-rounded human being. I liked my chapati smoke and smoky and crisp. It felt nice to gurgle paper. Why I call the mirror by my name must have something to do with my fear of dementia. When I was cast in the role of a tree, when I was cast in the role of a tree in Snow White and Seven Dwarfs, I complained to the teacher. My soggy eyes gave away my desperation. The Lord said, eat or get lost. Over time, my favorite Baskin Robbins flavor came to be gold medal ribbon. So that was acceptance on it to, uh, to complete uh, my part. I would like to end on uh, some words uh, from Srinivas Raipurul himself. Um, something that I've actually carried for a long time, a particular line from a poem that, uh, that's called Oranges on a Table. And this particular phrase, which I would like to leave you with. So for the oranges on a table, what he refers to as oranges on a table, no longer a thought on the tree in spring. That's all for me. Uh, thank you so much to uh, Dr. Aparna, the Department of English, and uh, Dr. Anna Kurian, among uh, it, it, it means a lot to be here and, uh, you know, just to be sharing and reading and really touched and overwhelmed uh, by uh, everything uh, that you've uh, actually prepared and all the efforts. Thank you so much again. Thank you, Satya, for that lovely rendition. And you have the privilege of many more poets in the audience than in, you know, anyone else has had. So I guess, you know, the zooming has its advantages. Oranges on a table somehow is always chosen by the poets and the family always found it extremely abstract. Um, I also wanted to say that you, Satya, 
um, want to write poetry in the air. So I hope we'll all be flying again very soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, did did Mamang Dai want to say anything? Uh, no, no, that was just, just very nice uh, hearing Satya, you know, and reading reading from neural network because those were the lines that I was left with and I become the intimate stranger, you know, that kind of lacerating detail, the one he read from neural network. But there was another one in the Insomniac's triple sonnet for things left unsaid, which also struck me was, you didn't hesitate to chase the ball downhill while I decided in the first three seconds itself, I would assume the position of the watcher. So there are there is something in uh, Satya in your poems, you know that that is a kind of you you're being apart, but in that kind of lonely solitude, you're also making us feel less lonely. So we are very happy for that, and especially during pandemic time. I was very happy to read all the poems. Thank you, Dr. Aparna, also for including me you know, and giving me this opportunity to read young poets and their poems. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would now hand over to my sister, Professor Manorama Kanuri, to say some final words on our behalf. We are indeed honored to see such a variety of people, poets, family, friends, friends of the family who come to listen to the latest luminary of the Srinivas Rai Prol Poetry Prize winners. Firstly, I would like to congratulate and thank Satya for joining the list of uh, really um, young budding poets but who have made such a mark already, and I'm sure you will all go rise to great heights. I remember the day in 2008 when we have signed the MOU with Sachidananda Mohanty at the Department of English, Hyderabad University, in the presence of G. Thail, the charismatic poet, um, Sridhala Swami, and many others. And uh, now we have come 12 years from that day. And we are really happy to have had a long list of poets judging and bringing out these budding poets as the prize winners. This year, we have Mamang Dai, who's the jury member who selected the prize winner, as well as the three shortlisted members from 28 poems, which were selected painstakingly from more than 180 entries by uh, Pramod Nair and uh, Saradindu Bhattacharya of the Department of English, who have been supporting us since 12 years without losing the memento. Then we thank the head, Anna Kurian, who has also been the previous poet jury and uh, department faculty, and always has been encouraging and has beautiful words to say at this occasion. We thank Keki Daruwala for being present here and raising the level of the Poetry Prize. Thank you, Keki. Then we thank PRO Ashish um, Jacob Thomas, who has uh, given the right uh, publicity and uh, right, um, given the good picture of the Poetry Prize again this year in all press and uh, uh, other media. And then we thank Pranay Rupani, who gives us beautiful photographs and videos every year. Vasuki Belavadi, Pranay and Vasuki are from the Department of English. Vasuki designs the beautiful citation every year. I mean, sorry, Department of Communication. English, English, English keeps coming in our mind. <laughs> sorry, we know. <laughs> then uh, we have Ganesh from SIP, who does all the logistics behind the scenes. And then without my sister Aparna and her spouse Vinod Pavrala, both professors of Hyderabad University, this whole event would not continue to be there every year in such and rise to such great heights. This year, we are very happy that so many books of my father's have come out, thanks to Graziano. I hope you're listening, Graziano. We have got the physical copies with us and we have been going through them. It's all because of you and your encouragement 
and also Arvind Krishnamurti Mehrotra's encouragement of my father's poetry that we are standing here today and the prize event the Srinivas Rai Parole uh, Trust and the prize event has really reached great heights thank you one and all for patiently listening for more than an hour we have had more than 60 participants and uh, i think we can say we have been successful it's unfortunate we not able to see people face to face but the fortunate uh, thing is that this year we are able to celebrate the event on october 25th my father's birthday that was the aim initially but we were not able to do it all these years because of so many logistics of getting all the uh, stakeholders uh, all the uh, important people together but this time because everyone is sitting in the comfort of their own home they could log on on october 25th and i hope my father is seeing from above and feeling happy thank you thank you and uh, thank you all for coming good night we will everyone can switch on your videos and it can be a little informal those of you who want to leave may can leave but family friends who want to chat a little bit are welcome to stay for an after party without food or drink <laughs> <laughs> no